Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and I've got a rather interesting update on the climate around Australia, in particularly through the southeast, as a result of the observed sudden stratospheric warming event that we've had very recently over the top of Antarctica. Now, a sudden stratospheric warming event, or an SSW, remains uh, a very rare weather phenomena in the southern hemisphere. We've only observed three in the last 25 years, one in 2002, one in 2019, and the most recent one just a week ago in 2025. It's where the air high above the surface over the top of Antarctica warms dramatically up to 50 degrees Celsius in a very short period of time. And that's something we have observed very recently. In fact, it happened last week over the top of Antarctica and it can all cause all sorts of fancy stuff with the polar jet stream and just how uh, the climate interacts with other drivers. Uh, it can create all sorts of complicated weather scenes, but most typically for the Southeast of Australia, it often results in drier conditions, warmer conditions. And in 2019, especially, it's what led to the worst bushfire season on record and the black summer bushfires in December and January 2019 and 2020 respectively. It sounds like a scary term but I'm going to break it down for you uh, in the next couple of minutes and tell you exactly what to expect in your neck of the woods around Australia in the coming few months. So this is a look at the current uh, wind speeds and the uh, flow of the wind uh, high above the atmosphere, 30 kilometres up in the atmosphere here uh, with Australia here on the centre top of your screen and this is Antarctica down here. So you can see strong winds in the black over 300 kilometres an hour uh, but there has been a significant reduction in the uh, winds and in particularly in the jet stream around Australia. We've had a massive increase in the wind speeds through the uh, uh, subtropical jet stream around Australia. They have jumped from about an average of 200 kilometres an hour to nearly 300 kilometres an hour lately. And that's really fast tracking a lot of dry air into the southeast corner of the nation. Uh, and this is a very interesting interaction here that we're seeing with the wind speeds uh, high above uh, the atmosphere and then a little bit lower down in the atmosphere, a little bit closer to the surface of the Earth. But the most interesting aspect of this is the massive jump in temperatures that we've observed. Now, currently, you can see the temperatures here over the top of Antarctica. Keep in mind, this is 30 kilometers up in the atmosphere at minus 18.1 degrees Celsius. But that's not actually how cold uh, or how warm these temperatures got to lately. In fact, if we pull this back a couple of days, right back to about the 22nd of September, you can see that those temperatures jumped massively. Those temperatures jumped massively 30 kilometers up in the atmosphere to look at this over five degrees above zero. Now, keep in mind the average air temperature through at this altitude is about minus 50, touching minus 60 in places here over Antarctica at this time of the year. And these temperatures jumped over 50 degrees in just a matter of days to three to five degrees above zero, 30 kilometers up in the atmosphere. That is very warm. That's above zero temperatures, temperatures that you could bear with just a jumper on uh, 30 kilometers up above the atmosphere. It really was tremendous stuff. And I couldn't believe it when I was seeing it on the forecast models developing. It is a very rare weather event. You can see whilst it isn't anywhere near Australia, it will have major ramifications of the state of climate in Australia. In particular with the rainfall, I want you to think back to 2019, in particularly the last few months of 2019, we're at the end of a drought period and have a look at this. This is rainfall uh, deciles across Australia from October, November and December 2019. It's a very, very red map here from the Bureau of Meteorology, which means very much below average to lowest on record rainfall accumulations through a wide swathe of the Northern Territory, Queensland, but in particular, particularly South Australia, Victoria, and New South Wales. It's what contributed to the worst fire season of uh, in Australia's history and the black summer bushfires of December and January at the end of 2019 and the start of 2020. And then it eventually did kick off a bit of a wet period that we're now uh, currently in right now since 2020. Rainfall has generally speaking been above average across Eastern Australia, especially. But yeah, this sudden stratos uh, stratospheric warming event that we had in late 2019, around the same time, actually late August, early September, it resulted in much warmer air air moving into southeastern Australia and much drier air moving into southeastern Australia. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. We recently had a very wet forecast come out, especially through August and early September. We were predicting much above average rainfall through New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, and also by extension into Tasmania. That has now really backed down. And you can see two week rainfall anomalies, especially throughout the uh, first two weeks of October, are expected to be far below average through wide swathes of New South Wales, parts of South Australia, Victoria, uh, with Tasmania actually uh, kind of going against the grain there for reasons I'll explain in just a second. The rainfall is expected to remain well clear of New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia for at least another couple of weeks. The thing with the SSW is that they are relatively short lived and we are already seeing temperatures return closer to normal. The current temperatures at 30 kilometre altitude uh, back up to about minus 20, minus 25 or so. So it already is weakening off a little bit and whilst it is a very strong SSW event that we've observed, they don't last too long. So rainfall will return to southeastern Australia and 
it will return as per what the forecast was suggesting by late October and into early November. But that takes out two months of this above average, very wet spring that we were expecting across southeastern Australia, which means the rainfall that we were expecting for September and October, it's just not going to arrive. It's going to come in through November and then rainfall should return to normal through mid-December and into early January, which means those really wet conditions that we were expecting through New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, and also parts of Queensland and Tasmania, they're not going to materialise now. And at best, it will be average. And the worst case scenario is, especially for South Australia, the drought impacted communities through South Australia, they are going to now look a lot drier than usual. Now, the SSW also has some more further re uh, reaching impacts, and that's being observed in the southern parts of Queensland. The suppression of moisture in the atmosphere uh, caused by the SSW is why we're not expecting the thunderstorm event that's coming this week, Wednesday and Thursday, the 1st and 2nd of October, respectively, to be all that strong. There's just not going to be enough moisture in the environment for uh, those thunderstorms to really make the most of. But as I mentioned, rainfall should return and wetter conditions should return as we get through October, but especially in towards November. And the reason for that is is because the SSW, which is a, think of it as a dry climate driver, is in a bit of an arm wrestle between a couple of wet climate drivers. In particularly uh, through the Southern Hemisphere uh, regions, we've got that strong uh, cool neutral that we're observing now in the Pacific Ocean, which means uh, sea temperatures in the Eastern Pacific are much cooler than average, but into the Western Pacific, they're actually looking a lot warmer than average. And uh, that also includes the waters around the Australian mainland, particularly you can see here where I'm circling with the cursor, warm waters into the Coral Sea, uh, offshore from Australia, and that's expected to result in above average rainfall through this wet season. But like I said, that arm wrestle is occurring through the SSW, and that's also going to occur through the Indian Ocean Dipole as well, which is also strongly negative, which is a big rainfall driver, especially for southeastern Australia. So you can think of this as an arm wrestle between two equally powerful uh, competitors, the IOD, which is a wet driver, and the SSW, which is a dry driver, keeping that rainfall out of southeastern Australia. Who will win? Not 100% sure. I think it is going to be more of a dry uh, through the next couple of weeks and then we're going to see that rainfall return as we get in towards the later parts of October and then into early November as previously mentioned. So the Indian Ocean Dipole is where warm water sit, or a negative Indian Ocean Dipole, which is what we're seeing right now, is where warm water sit offshore from Western Australia and that drives increased rainfall and moisture levels being carried through that jet stream uh, over Central Australia and then into the southeast of Australia where it's then released as thunderstorms and rainfall around this time of the year. Now that IOD normally brings good rainfall, especially when it's negative towards South Eastern Australia. In 2019, we actually had a positive Indian Ocean Dipole, which means that moisture wasn't being carried through Central Australia because the sea temperatures offshore from WA were a lot cooler than average. Uh, so it's completely different to 2019, and that's why we're not expecting a crazy bushfire season across Southeastern Australia or a crazy dry summer or a crazy warm summer. It is because that IOD is kind of uh, mitigating those impacts a little bit more from the SSW. Uh, but we're still expecting the rainfall to be suppressed a little bit longer, like I said, for at least another two or three weeks across southeastern Australia. And you can see that IOD index right now. Uh, it, this doesn't go back to 2019, but 2019, we had an IOD index, a positive IOD index around what we saw at the end of 2023. Uh, right now, we're now very much uh, the opposite of that with a deep negative IOD being observed, one of the strongest IODs or negative IODs that we've seen since November 2022. So yeah, definitely a bit of a wet driver going Going on with the IOD and then we've got that dry driver coming in with the um, uh, the SSW. So it is, like I said, that arm wrestle between these dry and these wet forces. And the thing with the SSW is it's a little bit more localised to southeastern Australia, which means it's likely to be stronger than the IOD and that rainfall likely to keep out of southeastern Australia for at least the next uh, couple of weeks at this point in time. And you can see that in the rainfall accumulation forecast here. Major forecast models really don't have that much in the way of rainfall, especially through New South Wales and South Australia. There's a little bit of falls coming through for Victoria and also for the west coast of Tasmania. In strong SSW events, the west coast of Tasmania generally uh, hangs around as being wetter uh, than the southeast corner of Australia. It kind of works in a bit of an opposite uh, because of the southern annular mode and how that works. Uh, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other driver that I could go on for a while about. But yeah, rainfall uh, staying out of southeastern Australia for the foreseeable future out until about mid-October. And that's what all major forecast models are suggesting at this point in time. So dry conditions forecast to continue until that IOD really begins to ramp up with the tropical moisture coming through, which normally happens around mid-October, and that should mitigate the dry period that we're now in for southeastern Australia. 
So just to summarize with this, the SSW is not directly influencing Australia's climate in a direct manner. It's just uh, manipulating the current climate drivers around southeastern Australia to manipulate rainfall to be drier than average and temperatures to be warmer than average, which is what we've been seeing in the last two weeks or so. Now, rainfall from the IOD or rainfall sent in from the negative IOD generally starts up when tropical moisture begins to build offshore from WA, which is going to happen sometime in the next two weeks. And that's likely to spell the end of the dry period that we're seeing through southeastern Australia after around October 15 or so. So rainfall is coming southeastern Australia. It's going to be about six weeks later than the initial forecast suggested, but it is on the way, mark my words. Uh, and in terms of uh, further reaching impacts out into about November or even late November, the impacts from the SSW should be completely mitigated by around that point in time, especially through Queensland and then late November at the absolute latest through other parts of southeastern Australia. Again, still an interesting time period to watch and there are so many moving parts this forecast, that's for sure. It's an even more complicated one than what the 2019 forecast was, and we knew less about the SSW back then than we do right now. What can you expect through southeastern Australia? Well, jet, like I said, generally dry for the next two weeks, generally warmer for the next two weeks. There will be some wet periods here and there with thunderstorms, especially further south around coastal Victoria, South Australia, and then, like I said, down into towards Tasmania. Generally speaking, it will be a little bit wetter in the next couple of weeks uh, through some of those places, but widespread dry conditions are expected. Widespread warmer conditions are expected. I don't expect a crazy bushfire or crazy warm summer like we saw back in 2019 to unfold across southeastern Australia. That's highly unlikely this point in time but still it is an equally interesting time period to watch and certainly one they'll be watching like a hawk in the next couple of days anyways i've got more information uh out over on the facebook page so go and check that out link in the description if you have that found this video informative then please let me know in the comment section down below leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already don't get me wrong it's not a good forecast for southeastern australia and south australia victoria in particular but it's also not an absolute disaster and the ssw is not something to be panicking about or uh, really worrying about at this point in time that's about all for me today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, then let me know in the comment section down below. Special shout out to the channel sponsors, of course. Their names are on screen right now. That's all for me. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.